Hello and welcome again to a Christmas version of the Hobo and Girlfriend. Or actually, it's not Christmas. A special name for this show. This is the Deleteness. Must be deleted. For Deleteness. Deleteness special. It means only one thing. That's time to talk about some wrestling. I'd like to thank everyone out there for watching, especially, and I'm going to give the, these two some special props, Saint 318, Merry Christmas. This WWE thank you goes out just for you. And bum slicks. Yes. Again, you mentioned drinking on Christmas. Yes, it's always easier to relax on Christmas after family shows up than with a nice cold beverage. Adult beverage. If you're of age. Yum. This annex. This drunkness sign goes out to you. Again, I'd like to wish everyone a happy delete miss. Or if you're not of the wrestling ilk, Merry Christmas, everyone. This will probably be going up late Christmas night. Maybe early on Wednesday? We'll see. It's kind of time for me to wind down my Christmas stuff. And the best way to wind down Christmas again. Beverage after, well, no one left today. This has been the first Christmas where I've kind of relaxed for a change. Felt good. Next year I can go bonkers again. Tasty. But again, one of the best ways to relax is to watch some pro wrestling, especially when it's darn good pro wrestling. And this is the SmackDown edition. And I know this was taped in Sacramento last week. Again, I don't mind that. Good. I say, you know what? Let the wrestlers enjoy Christmas with their family. I'm never going to deny anyone that fact unless. You meet Corporate Tom, who two episodes ago defeated Santa Claus and told everyone to get back to work or you're fired. Because I have to go back to work tomorrow and that's going to suck. That's for like nine hours, too. You need to ease us in. Five hours. Nine hours is too much of a jump. But again, let's talk about some wrestling. But before I do that, I'd like to, like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And again, SmackDown was kind of fun. It was it kind of followed the very typical Christmas vibe. Um, you have R-Truth as Truthy Claws coming out. And Car Alpha as his sidekick. It is a little seven second carol break instead of doing a dance break. And Dalen Bryant comes out. The, 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 the cheap materialism. Fickle. They're fickle. They're fickle. And then their cheap ma materialistic desires. I want to be home too on, on Christmas. Daniel Bryan, you were home on Christmas. We probably have to travel tomorrow, though, because I think they're taping the New Year's shows the 28th, 9th, whatever. But again, you can see this guy, Hobo Tom, at the Amway Arena here in Orlando, Florida. That is January 7th. So it's not next week. It's the following week. Although next week I do have to get my ticket for it. That's kind of important. Probably whatever day I have off. Either Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Oh, no, it won't be Thursday. Probably Friday, I guess. 
I'm not going on Monday. Tuesday is a mess. Well, yeah, probably Friday I'll get the ticket. And I'll be a fickle materialistic person. Although... Okay. Oh, our truth also called Daniel Bryan an, ang the, an angry, angry elf. Should have called him the angriest elf. Um, truth, he just gets jumped. Um, and he he's gonna his he's gonna be the thirtieth in the rumble. He says he's gonna win the rumble. Please don't. Uh, Daniel Bryan again. Truth and criminal do their little dance break. Daniel Bryan's having none of that. Thing, delete this and takes out the knee of our truth. And Daniel Brown looks a little bit beat up. That match he had earlier than that, that well, earlier the week. Okay, Fabe. Still beat up from that. Now we have our first match of the night, which was a really fun match. I mean, they're doing. They're, they're so, SmackDown, even though Raw is improving, SmackDown is still staying where it should be, which is really good. You had uh, Andrade Almas versus Mustafa Ali. And I know Selena Vega is married to Alexander Black. How short is Alexander Black? Selena Vega's tiny. I don't think Almas is... I don't think he's over six foot tall. I'll have to... Do some research on that, or someone can email me at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com and let me know how tall Alexander Black is. I wonder if she'd actually go to the events where he is. He's a good wife. I don't know. I'll have to keep my eyes open for that. <clears throat> That's a weird thing at NXT shows. Odd people show up. Again, I put up my. Selfie with MJ Jenkins. Of course, Nick Sable, the girl with the shiniest wizard. And Renita Gonzalez. I think that's her in-ring name. Again, I'm going to try and get some more. And I know I'm starting to tinker with some production stuff. Because from my Christmas show, I put on some music. Which is a good start. Eventually, I think for the new year, one of my goals is to have a very consistent product <laughs> coming from the hobo. Yeah, right. But yeah, this was a really fun match. I mean, Almas, he's just, he's vicious. This was a very fast paced match. Almas can keep up that fast pace, but the even. It's like another speed from Mustafa Ali, though. Almas has a fast pace, but that seems like it's going slow for Ali. When Mustafa Ali goes fast, whew, no one can keep up with him. I mean, the kicks are vicious by both guys. Um, I know Mustafa Ali had the little, little um, incident with Daniel Bryan, but he seemed to get over that. I mean, Ali can fly, too. He can do some stuff. He also uses a headbutt. Anyone who uses a headbutt is good in my... As long as it's not against a Simone or a Scotsman. Again, you have to watch Dolly. You can't headbutt the Usos. That's not happening. But again, it was such a fun match. I mean, this is really a great kickoff. And with SmackDown, you know, the matches, for the most part, are going to be very consistent. And they're going to be really good. So when it starts off as a surf and turf match. You always know that the next match still is going to be really good. It, it might go from up here to, to back down to here. But I mean, it's not going from here to here though. And the next match was even was was fun too because it featured the Us it was an eight man tag match. It was fun and it's really good to see the everyone on TV. So you had the Usos in the club. I guess they have respect for each other. 
versus Sanity and The Bar, which makes sense because Sanity and The Bar jumped in their match last week, so at least that makes sense. Um, the Usos for this match, they're the second best classic tag team double team or WWE, second only to the Revival. That's saying a lot. Revival are pretty darn good, but the Usos are right, right, right there, right beneath them, though. And then the club is probably right beneath them. I mean, Sanity's good. The, the bar is also really good, too. So as far as the, the tag team acumen, just the top five right now would probably have to be the Revival, the Usos, the bar, the club. I'll say New Day. And then Rude and Gables, price six, just outside of the top five. Only because they're, they're still they're, they're getting much better. But they're still not quite there at the top yet. Oh, wow. I mean... A little bit more, and then I'm probably off to bed. Again, this was a good match. It was really fast page. <laughs> and who did come down? Kofi Kingston's dressing like just a uh, pants, a jacket, and a tie. No shirt. Kofi's dressed like a Christmassy elf, and Biggie's in oiled up Santa Claus. Whoa! Not an image I need in my head there. It was funny, though. And then the bar comes down, and oh, by the way, they were tossing out red and green colored pancakes. I don't know if it was food coloring or if they put, like, that little sugary stuff on top. Like you do Christmas cookies. But for the most part, this match was really fun. Again, the Usos are a classic tag team. They, they know classic tag team wrestling. The club can do that, too. Bar can do that, Sandy, and not so much. But again, you know, Gallows is a big guy. So I know Killing Dane's pretty big. Alexander Wolf is pretty big, too. So, I mean, he's just a big dude. I like the fact that it was a fairly fast pace match. Again, yeah, it was really fun. They have their typical eight-man spot fest. And you know what? The club won. It was a Merry Christmas for the club. So you know what? The club got a Christmas gift. They got a win on TV. You know what that means? This had to be a surf and turf quality match. Then we see Ali getting jumped backstage by Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan is obviously not in the Christmas mood. Then we have Miz TV. Um, there's a good back and forth. Miz, T, uh, Miz has uh, Shane McMahon on. Um, eventually, they're going to be the greatest tag team. We'll see how that goes. And then it's also not only Christmas Day, but it's Rusev Day. And I knew, I kind of had that funny feeling. It's like, is he going to, something big's going to happen. He's either going to lose by some means of a dastardly disqualification, or he might actually pick up that USB today. We shall see. Or last week. And then the ne <clears throat> next match, you had Jeff Hardy versus Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe just looks like that. 100%. I think someone said he just looks constipated all the time. Moa Joe, I've seen him smile before, more so when he's dealing with people. But in the ring, he doesn't smile that much. <clears throat> oh, wow. Jeff Hardy, I mean, again, he came out in his Christmas paint. He had his kind of face painted up in the Christmas colors of red, green, and white. So it lets you know what day it is. And I'll tell you what, Jeff Hardy, 
he can still do the basic things, but he puts such a twist on it. It seems like it's like a very basic kick to the chest mule kick, but he does it in such flair and such panache. And it's so smooth looking. I mean, he's so amazing. He might not be with us much longer, though. I know Matt's out because the bones in his lumbar, the vertebrae in his lumbar began to fuse together. Not good. That's probably taking more abuse. Forget, I think Matt's the older one. But he has a little bit less wear, I think, than Jeff does. But Jeff did take a bunch of time off, though. So, so we'll see how long, how much longer Jeff is going to be around. Again, Jeff Hardy, he can also chain wrestle. Move after move after move after move. It's really great to watch. Joe's just strong. He's just viciously strong. Hardy's getting that vicious treat, though. Because you know what happened, baby? Panic came to town, baby. And said, you know what? He can't have either one lose. That ain't going to be fun. The crowd ain't going to be happy. We need to have a dust their finish, baby. Nobody loses. And that's what we had because Jeff Hardy just continued to pound Joe outside the ring. So hopefully we'll see this continue. But this again, this was fun. It was a dusty finish. It was a really good match, though. It's a cheeseburger, baby. And that leads us to the main event of the evening. Might do some processing on this video because this video is short. Yeah, I think it did Yeah. Um, we have Rusev versus Shinsuke Nakamura for the U.S. title. And I was kind of shocked. I'm like, you know what? They, they might do something. They might do something silly. Like Rusev might win, but he might hit Nakamura with like a candy cane kendo stick. Say that phrase five times fast. But again, it's a little it's a little bit slower pace. It's a very much more reserved. They gave this match a lot of time. They, I, I was in timing, but it had to be at least 15, 20 minutes, though. It just seemed long, but it didn't seem boring, though, because the crowd was chanting, this is awesome. And if you're sitting there watching, like, five hours of wrestling, the last thing you see, and you still have the ability to chant, this is awesome, that says a lot about, about the performers in the ring. Again, so you have the power of, of Rusev, Again, he's that brute strength of the, the very heavy-handed Rusev versus the more nimble, more agile, the quicker striking of Shinsuke Nakamura. Again, it's that old clash of styles. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, Shinsuke can, can kick the he was, can kick the heck out of you too, and Shinsuke is the one person who actually managed to kick out of a Machka kick. And the fun thing with having Lana present ringside, I'll, I'll get to the other thing very shortly, but even she sells, it's like, ooh. When you can see Lana kind of cover her face, she doesn't want to watch her husband get beat up. And she feels her husband pain the ring. That's good. That makes it, hey, this is almost believable. This is great. Uh Rusev does kick out of a Kinshasa, which is a shock. And then, you know, it wasn't a slow pace because, and I know I know they're considered wrestled, but, but like the triangle choke is still a legitimate choke hold in MMA. And in the pro wrestling, it's more of a wrestled, but it's still done with purpose. He's, he's wearing down Rusev, and it's still really good work. But then Rusev hit a second Machka kick, and that was it. The crowd was shocked. It was Happy Rusev Day! Rusev Day. Rusev Day. Rusev Day. Rusev Day. And even Lana seemed really happy. 
He did, he did like a whole bunch of short little steps. He's, I know I shouldn't be saying this about another man's wife, but she's a little, she, she's a little booty there. Especially in those heels and just going, ooh. It's kind of neat. And then the show finishes up backstage with, so again, you have Rusev winning, and you know what? This was a fun, good surf and turf match. Did I have a surf and surf tally match? Oh no, except for the dusty cheeseburger, baby. Because nobody wins. Nobody wins. You ain't gonna get surf and surf. You're gonna get a cheeseburger, baby. But then there was a backstage part with AJ Styles and Mr. McMahon. And Mr. McMahon called out called out AJ Styles. He's like, like, you're AJ Styles. Face that runs the place, but Daniel Bryan's beating everyone up. This is Daniel Bryan's house now. I want you to be mean. I want you to be vicious. So what did AJ Styles do? He called cock Vince McMahon. And I swear, Vince McMahon had that little smile on his face saying, saying yes. So we'll see how that goes. So again, a merry deleteness to everyone out there. Um, because this is Christmas, I have a little bonus feature. You're going to see me in the Hobo Kitchen. And I'm going to be cooking my, or hopefully you'll see videos. I think I went over on a couple things. I think I most of the stuff I needed. And I almost forgot to actually tape it. But you will see the cooking with a hobo. I'm going to be making a Wellington bacon cheese, a bacon cheeseburger Wellington. And fries and all the, the good fixings. Because the only person I have to cook for is me tonight. And I also made a plate for a friend too, but that's okay. I didn't have to go out, go, go, go full hobo and make a whole spread. But again, Merry Christmas to everyone. And to everyone, a hobo good night. For I guess this is the 12th day of hoboing. And on the 12th day of hoboing, the hobo he did find one bottle of pretty good scotch. And a bunch of aluminum cans. I'll see everyone later. Bye. Bye. Hello and Merry Christmas, everyone. Well, again, welcome back to Cooking with the Hobo Cooking Show. My name is Hobo Tom, and right now you're in the Hobo Kitchen. And I just realized I kind of forgot to do things a little bit, but right now I'm making a cheeseburger Wellington. Um, very simply, as you can see here on the cutting board, I've kind of, flat I will, I did flatten out a little, about two and a quarter pounds of beef, one big old hunking block of cheese I just cut in a half and stuffed inside of it. So again, this is kind of a Christmas dinner thing. It's Christmas, you should always have something somewhat fancy at least. Yeah, how does that work? There we go. That's not too bad, I guess. Trust me, nothing's that good. And I always like, I do believe in seasoning beef. Nice little seasoning there. So right now the beef is going to be done. You know, it's really simple. You just take two and a half pounds of beef, or I think two and a quarter pounds of beef, flatten it out on said cutting board, put cheese in, and you can tell it's nice and, well, for the most part, round. You just want to let that kind of sit for a little bit in any other piece of meat. So while that's getting ready, um, you don't have to start to strand it, but you do have to wash your hands, so you don't want cross-contamination. Cross-contamination is bad. So now that I've kind of the middle part done, and this goes in the refrigerator just so it stays cool a little bit, Oh wow, I need to put some other in here. Some other ingredients. Let's see here. Oh, that's, that's what I'm looking for. I like to use pizza crust for a lot of stuff. It's pretty simple to use, fairly basic. I think only because I'm, this is the first time I'm making it, I didn't want to use raw bacon and raw beef. So I know beef, if it's a little pink, 
is still good. Bacon, if it's pork, if it's a little pink, this is probably terrible. I like me some extra sharp cheese. So now, it's kind of pretty basic. Um, let's see, a pan might be too small. Let me go get. A nice size baking pan. Set that right there for a moment. And as always, I want to grease up the pan a little bit so you don't so it doesn't stick there. That's no fun. So I just take some margin I have here. I just use a napkin. You can use a brush. Especially, I have to make sure everything gets, kind of gets covered. One big smear of butter always tends to work, or margarine. Um, oil I don't like to use on pans, only because it kind of drips all over the place. Again, always wash your fingers. You don't know what you're going to be handling. Dish towel. And again, our refrigerated product should always be put away fairly immediately. This goes back. Let me take, check the time a little bit. Oh, about wow, four minutes. And very classic pizza dough. Very simple opening instructions. I guess you can get anything. I know the one thing I saw suggested filo dough. To me, that's a little too much. Pizza crust, if you do it thin enough really has the same effect when I've made Wellingtons before. Let's press here. Press here! Press spoon at seam. That sucks. Every so often you get... Oh, there we go. Again, it also said to use spoon, not fingers. You know, again, very traditional pizza dough. Take the pizza dough. Again, I like to push the middle on out. You want it to cover really most of the pan, but you don't want to get any thin spots. Wow, this stuff is cold. Again, the reason why you butter the pan is that it's not going to stick, which is kind of a bad thing. You want to press it out as much as you can, especially along the short side. If you've ever made any Wellingtons before, you know generally you have Enough to wrap it up lengthwise. Not enough sometimes. To tuck the corners in, because if not all that ch cheese and everything else we're going to put in there is going to kind of melt. Again, once you're done with that, I'm going to wash your hands. So that's actually a pretty good size, what we have going on. Um, this knife I used to cut the cheese before. Again, you can use the same blades to cut the same stuff. Trust me, nothing in this house lasts long enough to actually reseal it. And I'm too lazy to use the zipper part. And you can use kind of any kind of cheese. I think they showed American cheese. Eh. I'm feeling a little special today. Again, you just layer it. I wonder if you can see that. Oh, yeah, you should be able to see that pretty good. Especially in the middle, because you know it's going to roll up a little bit. When the worst comes to worst, you can always cut the cheese. <laughs> cut the cheese. Especially here at this lower lip. And there. I mean, there are third ways around certain issues. Always. And you just take a 
That's the other thing I like about cheddar cheese. It's pretty easy to do that too. And honestly, if there's only if there's only like a piece or two left over, it's you can always have a good snack. So wow, that actually filled up pretty most everything with the exception of three and a half pieces. So that's pretty good. Hmm. Well, that's fine. That's going to get much fun. Let me throw this stuff out. Whoa! Have a nice little sheet. And this is the first time I'm doing this, so I'm actually using fully smoked bacon. It says serving sizes of three slices, and there's five slices, so if you do the math, there should be 15 slices. Really pre cooked bacon. And then the worst comes to the worst, I always put a piece or two in the microwave and nibble on it. With this, as long as, because this isn't touching anything else, and now it's just cheese. What's that? Again, I'm lazy, I just like to cut stuff. Yeah, cut. Wow, they seal this up better than I thought they would. And then of course knife goes right right into dishwasher. And it's pre-cut, so it shouldn't be not super thick, which isn't bad. So remember, you're, you are gonna cook this a second time. And try and layer it as best you can. Remember, this is a cheeseburger Wellington. So there's one, two, five. So that's not bad. So they're doing three sets of five. Hey, okay, someone did their math right. Yes, the math was done correctly. Unlike other people I know. So this is actually really going to fill in pretty nicely here. Probably going to use about 10 slices of bacon. Maybe a little bit more. So if there's only two pieces left. Gonna go to waste. Um, just put that slice there, and eventually I'm gonna put this piece in the microwave. Get myself a snack. You know what? Yeah. For like a minute. Microwave is on the plate. For the most part, that's really the the base of it. Again, I've already seasoned the meat. I'm gonna make a little snack for myself. Again, always wash, because even though they said it's cooked bacon, you never know. Now this is gonna be the tricky part, because this beef log beautiful looking beef log, has to go on top of this, and I wonder if it's just easier just to, oh there we go, you just kind of roll it down, yeah it's going to crumble a little bit, this goes right in the dishwasher, I'm not even playing with that, oh man look at that, I'm going to have to do my dishes today. That's the microwave. That's just for my own personal bacon. Again, so let's see here. That's, all, oh, that's, that's looking pretty good. Again, you're going to kind of have to squish things a little bit. So you bring the one dough up. Bring this edge up here.
Pro's Mini looks so much more easily done. So now you just have to kind of finesse it, because again, it's not that perfectly round shape. You can kind of squeeze it in a little bit. And never expect everything to go perfectly in the kitchen. As you can see, if you're patient with things, and work things a little bit, it's really, wow, that's going to be really darn close. So up there, you kind of pinch it in, pinch in the bacon. And this is why I always suggest leaving a little bit more at the ends, because again, you can pull it. But here, kind of crimp this up. You're stuffing a little piece of bacon at that end. Crimp that end up. Actually, so this should be very little exception. Again, if there's some places, again, there's going to be thicker parts of dough. Honestly, what I've done in the past, you just take a little piece. You just seal up the holes. Well, I'm not going to use an egg wash, because I know it called for an egg wash, but this dough's fairly sticky enough where I don't think I'm going to need an egg wash. And you want to kind of crimp everything closed so there's no seams, because there is all that cheese is going to come flowing out here. It's going to have a freaking mess of no cheese. If you're making a cheeseburger Wellington, you want to have a little cheese. I'm going to go fairly, again, whenever you're doing something, always kind of wash your hands. It's good hygiene. Make sure everything's nice and closed. It's tight for the most part. I mean, if there's a piece of bacon sticking out, whatever. Again, there's a little hole here. Just patch things up just a little bit there. And then to make it feel authentic, like an authentic cheeseburger. Cannot have a cheeseburger. Wow. Unless you have a sesame seed bun. And my suggestion is don't buy sesame seeds. Go raid someone else's closet for sesame seeds. So I have this from my parents. They never even broke the seal. And the seal's there. No idea why I think nothing in this house goes unsealed long. I'm lazy. Try and peel it up. It's lazy, it's dry. Just you can use a knife, whatever. And make sure it's a clean blade. And just be careful because these seeds again will go all over the freaking place. Then you just have one big mess to clean up. So don't pour it out like that. If you're Mario Batali or the Iron Chef, you can kind of go, eh, eh, eh. I'm lazy, though, folks. So this. Nice kind of liberal dosing there. Then you can see, kind of, I just put some sesame seeds on. Um, they said to use an egg wash. I think pizza dough is a little bit different. This, you yeah, want to be kind of careful. You want to bake it. You don't want to go too hot because it's one of those things that's to go low and slow on. So I like to set it for 400. And this is probably going to take about a good half hour to cook. Because remember, it's not so much what happens to the crust. It's what happens to the inside. Again, this goes in set oven like that. And along with that, eventually, because it's a cheeseburger, you cannot have a cheeseburger without french fries. I think I forgot to pull these out last night. Then I want to feel a little fancy. 
and I'm kind of making some for some co-workers as well. So really, oh, there we go. Yeah, that's frozen salt. And so again, I like steak fries. This makes it feel a little bit fancier. Ooh, something smells good. Oh, that's right. Again, you need season, see, what's this? This is nature seasonings. I do like to use kind of a more traditional seasoned salt. I used to have a french fry seasoning, and you can use that if you want. It's the best, however, because my supply of french fry seasoning went away. Again, ladies, you can have this guy cooking all day, every day for you, every Christmas dinner. All the time, you just sit back, relax, have a cocktail. These things are frozen salt, so they're going in the oven as well. And the final thing I'll show you because I'll pull it out later. You cannot have a quality cheeseburger. And then you always want to cut these fresh. I have some nice yummy looking tomatoes. You know, the price of shredded lettuce and a head of lettuce is the same. That saves me a little bit of time. And of course, I have the onion. And who cannot have a cheeseburger without pickles? You know, I have some nice hot spicy pickles. And I'll come back in about 40 minutes and see how things are going. So I shall gonna put this all kind of on the shelf, have it all prepped and ready. And so 40 minutes is gonna be a while. I have stuff to do. Kind of straighten up the rest of the house from Christmas. Again, Merry Christmas, everyone. And thank you for watching the Hobo's Kitchen. I'll be back in a little bit. Bye. Okay, welcome back, folks. As you can see in the oven, it's almost done. The french fries are actually turning a nice golden brown for a change. And a little fat came out. That's okay. That's kind of to be expected. I'll sit there and I'll deal with that later. So again, that's probably done. That's probably almost done. What I do like to do, I do like to rotate it. I don't want that fat kind of burning everything. So all I do okay. actually quite a bit there. Kind of rotate it around. And that's actually almost done cooking. So now we're going to get probably the most important aspect of all of eating. And that is the plating of it. So I just have, let's see here, I still have a nice little plate for it. Very fancy looking plate. Yes! Nice fancy looking plate. And of course it is the Christmas season. Christmas season will not be complete without said Christmas napkins. I shall present this. At least how I, how I, I would present it. Things now that, ooh, I can have stuff. I can have lettuce with my noodles tomorrow. Can look kind of lazy. Lazy Tom, lazy hobo. And it is cheeseburger Wellington. Nice little bed of lettuce there. Yes! Because I'm making just a little, little pizza. Do I have a bigger thing than this? Shoot, they're all small. Boy's not a man, so he makes this thing. No, that's just a small. I'm trying to make something for a friend as well. I'm just going to put, that's my dish. This goes back inside the refrigerator. It's probably finished out. Actually, you know what? I'm going to have a noodles and salad. Oh, shoot. Hey, but I got two done. Now, I like to use Roma tomatoes mainly because they're cheaper. 
Yeah, there's only, ooh, that's almost done cooking actually. So what I'm going to do now, do not want to overcook things. That's a very bad sign. Well, as you can see, it kind of did open up a little bit. Let me make it expand, but overall, it doesn't look too bad. This looks actually delicious. I need to fry them just a little bit longer, so what I'm going to do, again, you cannot have cheeseburger Wellington without you know, some classic items. Chop choppy. I like my, I do prefer my tomatoes cut a little bit on the thin side. Be very careful because I, my knives are always the sharpest. For a while I used to be in a seafood department and it was my job to cut fish. So I learned very quickly how to cut stuff. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to kind of pile that over because I do want some space for the fries. they getting lettuce and stuff. Here again, just make a nice little semicircle. That's probably enough. I can always cut up more if I really need to. Actually, I think I'll just cut one up so I'll you want to give some to a friend. You guys can kind of see this. Yes, I've just learned how to make, put music in my videos and not get copyright in French for it. So I'm kind of humming the theme to the Hobo and Girlfriend Wrestling Show. Nice one with tomatoes for as well. Actually, you can see the beef, from what I can see, is actually browned up really nice. And it's always nice to have well done food. Or at least properly done. You don't want it. Well, remember if you're using vegetables, I use the same knife. And what I've figured out is with onions, just instead of trying to really peel that onion, do that. You know what? No one's gonna miss that first lip, first one or two layers of onions. So much easier. Look how easy that was. I mean, that was way too easy. Yeah, you might get some skin, but there. You see how easy that was to take that skin off the onion? The master. Yes. Okay, now that it's Christmas, it's not drunkness anymore. It's happy deletemus. Delete! Yes! Delete! And you can do whatever you like with your onions. Um, I prefer mine actually kind of whole still. I'm just going to put those nice and neat on top of the lettuce. Fairly thin, but not well, onion skin thin. A little taste and flavor. Oh, and by the way, that bacon and cheese was, was delightful. Yes! Again, always pop the core of the onion. Put some onion. Her. The rest is going to go into a yummy noodle, lettuce, and tomatoes thing I'm going to make tomorrow. I almost forgot about that, too. It's pretty cool. That. Oh, it is Christmas, so there's always a little Christmas treat. And now that I have really my plate set up, 
we're going to see how this actually came out. And you're getting the first glimpse of this as am I. I think it's more so at that end. Uh, we'll see. Let's see here. Again, because I use this knife for veggies, I'm now cutting into a fi finished product. Oh, it's probably a low battery. So again, so I have everything all set up, kind of slice things up the way I want to. You can tell it's just really the slightest bit pink in there. Again, you can kind of have the juices dripping out. So that actually looks really good. That might have been eight minutes too. Again, you can see the cheese that melted. And so what I'm going to do, and the first piece is always the toughest to get out. There's still a lot of beef in there, though. Again, you just kind of guess. It never works exactly, especially the first piece. It's really steaming hot. So you know what? Worst comes to worst. Need to burn up in the oven. Looks really darn good though. Mm -hmm. I have one slice right now. I hope this is still recording. Yep. One big old chunk there. Actually, it looks pretty darn good. Let's see if I can get another. I think the one thing that killed me was that little seam there, though. Still, I mean, bacon's always a tough cut. Yeah, that actually came out really darn good. Again, it's just slightly pink in the middle. I mean, that's like nothing though. You can still see the cheese there. And even this shot here, it's ever the slightest big, barely pink. Barely make that out to be pink, so that looks really darn good. A slice for my friend. And this is actually probably going in the freezer. That actually wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, I'm probably, probably going to put that on a plate. That way I can clean stuff up. Um, so I have that. So I'm going to let that cool off just a little bit. Next thing I do need is the french fries. Because again, you can't have cheeseburger without french fries. It's just uncivilized. So these actually cook the same amount of time, same temperature. Turn you off. Let me get out the spatula for the fries. Just need to remember to do that Friday. Yeah, these are actually a golden color. I think that's what happens when you season them and cook them right. They don't burn. There's steak fries that are kind of crun crispy, crunchy on the outside, soft and chewy in the middle. Put a lid on this if I can. It's Friday. Put you in the freezer. It kind of got smushed. She'll deal with it. Just that. 
And now, of course, it's time for the presentation. Let's see what was this. Mm, French fry. Okay, and here we go. So here's the complete dinner. Can I have my delicious cheeseburger Wellington? Cold refrosting beverage. Again, it's Christmas time. There is white label scotch and soda. And you cannot have Christmas. No Christmas is complete without some nice key lime pie for dessert. And I'd like to thank everyone for watching again. Please have a Merry Christmas. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Again, ladies, this is the kind of feast you could have if you hang out with the one and only Hobo Tom. And Merry Christmas, everyone. And I'll try and put up what I make for New Year's Eve up on New Year's because I'm probably going to try and make a crab ragoon pizza.